Hi, this is Apostle William Godwin. Thank you for tuning in to the Worship Experience Ministries broadcast. I am the Senior Pastor, Senior Overseer of the Worship Experience Ministries in the Dallas metro area. Today's topic is God's Law versus Man's Law. Yes, uh, it is coming from the recent acts that has happened in Kentucky concerning uh, County Clerk Kim Davis being arrested and put in jail for her beliefs that marriage should be between one man and one woman and simplifying that that's God's word is the foundation of God's word. And I'm going to take you through five, well, hold on, uh, six scriptures uh, claiming and stating that the word of God is true. I mean, yes, the law of the land is in place, but my thing is when the law of the land contradicts God's law, which law would you rather prefer to prefer to obey? Now, I understand that she has a belief system that saying that she's not going to issue marriage license to same sex marriages, same sex couples. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, whether or not male or female, same sex, it's still illegal in God's eye. It's illegal in God's eye. Man may have made it uh, legal, but in God's eyes, it's still legal. Okay, I'm going to do, let's go to Leviticus chapter 20, and we're going to read verse 13. If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them had committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. This is God's word, God's law. I'm not making it up. Here's the Bible. I'm reading from scripture. You shall be put to death. That is Leviticus 20:13. Uh, just for y'all, just for if y'all want to know, I'm reading out of the Nelson Study Bible, the New King James Bible, the New King James Version. If that's if you're so in, intrigued of what exactly I'm coming from, but you shall be surely put to death. Homosexuality is a major sin. It is a stench in God's nostril, and for those people who want to walk or even operate in that vicinity of sexual relations is just nasty. Let's go to Mark chapter 10 and I'll be reading verse 6 through 9. And verse 6 through 9 says this, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother to be joined to his wife, a woman. And the two shall be one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Verse 9, therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. First of all, first of all, what God has joined together. Man cannot separate. God never joined together two men or two women. Satan did. That, that, that's a demonic force. It's a demonic attack. That's demons running havoc in your mind. So you are you have a reprobated mind thinking you can do anything and everything you want to do. I'm sorry to tell you, but no. Now, let's go to verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. And it says, Do you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals. That, that sums up lesbians as well. Sodomites, thieves, converters, drunkards, revilers, or exhorters will inherit the kingdom of God. You will not enter into the kingdom of God. That is the word of God. 
1 Corinthians 9, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, it says, it says right here, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, converters, among drunkards, and everything else will not enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, there is repentance for your sins, but if you get, but if you have repentance for your sins, you must turn away from that lifestyle. You can't keep on doing what you want to do and think God's going to bless you. It's not going to happen. Let's go to Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable among all. Stop right there. Marriage is honorable among all people, all gender, races, color, creed, whatever. Let's go on. And... The bed is undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. God is the ultimate judge. He's the only judge that really has the authority to condemn you to hell or to pass you through to heaven. Let's go to Jude. Chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards, destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Verse 7. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner. To these having given themselves over to sexual immorality, homosexuality, and has gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. In other words, you're going to burn in hell. <laughs> That's that summed up all in one. You're going to burn in hell because of your sins. The last verse. I'm going to read is Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 32. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their body among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even the women exchange the natural use of their body for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of their body for the use of I'm sorry, leaving the natural use of the women burned in their lust for another man. With men committing this, with, with men committing what is shameful. I'm going to read verse 27 again. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of their body, women burned in their lust for another man. With men sleeping with men committing what is shameful. Or women sitting with women, and this is vice versa. And re yeah, receiving in themselves the, the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their heart, in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobated mind to do these things, which are not fitting. 
But being filled with unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness, they that worship Satan, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteousness or the righteous judge, the right, the righteous, knowing the righteous judgment of God, sorry, that those who practice such things are deserving death. Nor, I mean, not only do the, not only do the same, but also approve of these things who are practicing them. So, I'm, um, so, Basically, what that scripture, the last part of that scripture was talking about. Those of you who condone, those of you who back up homosexuality, those who say it's okay, the same like manner that's going to happen to the ones who actually perform the act, God's going to do the same thing to you. The Bible says, what, with what measure you judge to others, God's going to measure that judgment back to you. So, in other words, Miss Kim Davis. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna get back on subject. Those are scriptures trying to get. Those are scriptures on uh, revelatory of the the sinful nature of man. Excuse me, you want to adjust the camera? There we go. Now Miss Kim Davis was in no error whatsoever. She did what was right. She did what was right. At all costs. Because the Bible clearly states marriage should be with one man and one woman. Because the Bible says be fruitful and multiply. How in the world can you multiply when you got two same sex people that cannot be multi that cannot be fruitful? Tell me that. You cannot be fruitful if you have the same sex couple. Now they now they got the uh, thing where you can adopt. Okay, well if you adopt, what are you gonna tell the child? Now to Mr. Robbie Blankenship and Jesse Cruz, I'm gonna tell you plain up and straight: get delivered. Let God save you, because you're going to hell. Your lifestyle is a stench in God's nostril. You two are gonna be one of the ones, along with Miss April Miller and her lover. Who sued Miss A Miss Miss Kim? Y'all are gonna be one of the couples, two of the couples, that on judgment day, God's gonna say, "Depart from me, I never knew you," because your lifestyle did not pan up to the word of God and the laws of God. Now I'm now now to Rowan County. Uh, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say this: You have a city official behind bars. That the only reason why she was put behind bars is because she. Did not issue marriage license to a same-sex couple. Now, to Judge David L. Bunning, I'm telling you this, that you are very wrong. Just because you are a Supreme Court judge and you hold the office of judge, you are not the official judge. You are not the Supreme Judge as you think you are. You're letting all this power go to your head because you think you're all that. Well, let me tell you something. As a man of God... To a man who's not of God. I'm telling you this. Let her go. Release her. Because if you don't. In the next few days. You're going to see the hand of God on your life. But it's going to take some stuff from you. I'm prophesying. I'm a prophet of God. I don't boast. I don't brag. And I don't lie. What should she, You have no right to put her in jail. There's no right. You, have, you do not have that right. Just because you're a judge. I pray to God that God has mercy on your soul on the day of judgment. That you too will not enter into the gates of hell. Mr. Josh Ernest, the White House uh, Secretary or whoever you are. You need to make this statement known to President Obama. That unrighteousness is being prevailed right here. This woman is being in prison. She's falsely in being imprisonment for her religious beliefs. In the United States. Mr. Mark Solemn, who pushes gay marriage, gay, gay rights, just like Robbie 
Jesse and April and her lover, get it together. I know we're living in the last days, people should say. But the last, but us Christians, pastors, oh, another thing, there's a petition being signed for the release of Judge Bunny from office. I just want to point that out to you. By city officials and clergy. And don't think that just because you're a judge and you sit on a high pedestal, God ain't going to demote you. Because the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So he who is off his self above others will be demoted. Now, this comment that I read online that no one is above the law, that is a total not true statement. Every Christian is above the law. Why did I say that? Because we have God in us and God is the ultimate law maker. He's the ultimate judge. Who do you think gave you your position? Not you, not, not the votes. God gave you position. Why? Because God, the Bible says, in him do we live, move, and have our being. So God is the one that gave you the position. And God is the one that can take it away. So, I'm going to leave y'all with this. We are going to fight. This means, that, like the song says, this means war. There are some Christians that are standing up for what is right. Every demonic spirit of homosexuality is in the earth. Just like we have rapists, murderers. We have every, every other body out there that's doing wrong. You have more major criminals to go after than Miss Kim Davis, who did nothing but didn't want to issue a license. She may be a clerk under uh, under policy or judicial law, but her God is much greater than you. The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So, this means war. The Christians are finally going to come up. This means war. Judge Boeing, get ready for war. Kim, get ready for war. Robbie, Jesse, April, Mark, Josh. All of y'all, all of y'all homosexuals and lesbians, get ready for war. Because God will prevail. I am Apostle Dr. William T. Godwin, Jr. The Senior Overseer of the Worship Experience Ministries.